Hello and welcome to module 10. Now we are taking everything that we learned in module 9, a single population hypothesis testing, and now we're expanding on it just a little bit and we're looking at two population uh, hypothesis testing. You will look here both at means and proportions. The differences and similarities between the tests on means and proportions here in module 10 will be very similar to those similarities and differences back in module 9. Now some of the similarities that we will encounter here in module 10 when we're looking at two population testing is the process. The process of hypothesis testing is the same. Specify your null and alternative hypotheses, your level of significance, calculate a test statistic, find a p-value or a critical value, draw your conclusion, and then interpret what that conclusion means. So the process is the same. If you got lots of practice doing that in module nine, you're gonna be doing the same thing now in module 10. What are some of the differences? Well, now what we're gonna be looking at, well, we still have upper tail, lower tail, two tail tests. But because I have two populations, I need to distinguish between them. So I have population one and I have population two. And now we can test for any magnitude of a difference. Am I testing to see whether there's a difference at all, meaning some hypothesized difference is just zero, or am I testing for some specific magnitude of a difference? Are they different by a magnitude of three or a magnitude of five or a magnitude of 10? So here we can have again, let's do a lower tail test. And here we have some hypothesized difference. Or, of course, we can do a two tail test. Mu1, is it, let's write it like this actually. Minus mu2, is that difference equal to some value or not equal? To some value and of course we have the upper tailed option mu1 and mu2 is that difference greater than some value so you see some similarities here some differences here similarities same options of test lower tail upper tail two tail test differences well now we've got two populations in here and now we're testing for a hypothesized difference value now, I cannot stress this next point enough. This, what I'm about to say, is most relevant for one-tail tests. And that is always define your terms. What is mu1? What is mu2? You have to say what those two terms represent. Because in the case of a one tail test, that's going to influence whether you're doing an upper tail test or a lower tail test. We can develop uh, one test in two different ways, depending on how we define our terms. If, if I'm comparing, you know, apples and pears, let's say I'm looking at the average weight of apples and pears. Well, let, let's say I'm putting together a test to see, you know, I have, I'm testing the claim that the average weight of an apple is greater than the average weight of a pear. So here I can set this up and say mu1 is apple, mu2 is pear. Well, I could set this up like this and say, okay, here's my null hypothesis and alternative. Let's say here's mu one, this is my apple. So I'll set it up like this. I'll change those ones to, to A's. And my test is to see that whether or not the average weight of an apple is greater than that of a pear. So I would write that something like this. 
And of course, if that hypothesized difference is just zero, it can be in fact easier to write it like this. And so now, it's pretty straightforward. If the evidence supports the null hypotheses, well then that statement, that claim is false. If the evidence supports the alternative hypotheses, okay, now I have evidence to show the average weight of an apple is greater than that of a pear. What happens if I just switch my definitions around? What happens if I say, no, this is going to be a pear and this is going to be an apple? I can still test exactly the same thing, except now it's going to be a lower tail test. Because now that null and alternative hypotheses, well, population one is now pair, and if I'm still testing the same thing, I want to test to see if the average weight of an apple is greater than the average weight of a pear, well, isn't that really the same as testing whether or not the average weight of a pear is less than the average weight of an apple? So here I can take exactly that same test and now I can formulate it in two different ways, an upper tail test or a lower tail test. Both of these are correct. Both of these will give you the exact same conclusion. They'll give you the exact same results. One will give you a positive test statistic. One will give you a negative test statistic. But the outcome will be the same. The only difference, and it's a small difference, depending on just how picky your instructor might be, is that if the problem is worded, perform a test to determine whether or not the average weight of an apple is greater than that of a pear. Well, this test formulation here is maybe a little more consistent with the way the problem is worded because that alternative is very specifically saying the average weight of an apple is greater than that of a pear. As much as this is testing the same thing, it's actually more consistent with the test to see whether the weight of a pear is less than that of an apple, which we can all agree it's the same thing. But it's not, the test isn't written exactly the same way that the problem is being stated. But in the end, you're going to get the same outcome. So either one, in my opinion, either one should be fine. But other instructors might have different opinions about that. Now, also in this module, in module 10, we go through two population testing. We'll look at this in terms of means, which I have here. We'll do proportions, which the same thing, the notation will change uh, to a P. There'll be one other small little complication there, but we'll cross that bridge when we need to. But also in module 10 is our first discussion on different experimental designs. Experimental design is really just a fancy way of talking about different ways of collecting the data. And so we will have, towards the end of this module, a discussion on what is called two independent samples, which is really what I'm describing here, where I'll have two samples, each one will have so many observations, they might be the same number, they might be different. Maybe here in my example, these both have 10 observations. And we'll calculate sample means for each of those, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do that test. That's two independent samples. Then we'll also talk about what is called a matched sample. And a matched sample here we get into a discussion on accounting for different sources of variation, which in chapter 10 is a little bit of an introduction to this accounting for different sources of variation, but it becomes crucial when you get into module 13, which is analysis of variance, because in analysis of variance, all you do is account for different sources of variation and your tests are built on those different sources of variation. A match sample well, I might still have 
two, we call them treatments, we can call them samples here if we like, A and B, but rather than having two independent samples, here I might have one, two, three, however many different what we call experimental units or observational units. These entities, these things that are giving me a data point, these things that I am measuring. Here I have 10 plus 10. Here I have only 10 of these experimental units that I'm measuring and each one is going to give me two data points which means that I'm applying whatever is different between my two samples or what we'll call our two treatments. I'm applying both of them to each of those experimental units. Now, what I'm saying here hopefully will make more sense once we get to that section of the module, but that's where we're going. So we're gonna be looking at two different types of experimental designs, two different ways of collecting the data and the big difference between those two is how we account for different sources of variation within that data set. So that gives us a good start on module 10. We'll start off looking at two independent samples on means and we will get into tests on proportions and matched samples. I cannot stress this enough. Don't forget to define your terms because that determines whether or not an upper tail test or a lower tail test is appropriate. Yes, it's less important for a two tail test. The consequences aren't as severe, but it is still very important. Okay. That's enough for our intro. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's get into some practice problems.